Okay, this, this is real bad. Today, we'll continue on my brother's E46 project and install a gear type LSD. In the last episode, I actually wanted to install a similar unit into my E34. Then I unfortunately learned that the longer gear ratios from the TD and TDS models have a different gearing offset and therefore are not compatible with the LSD unit I bought. What a bummer. But yeah, my brother bought a similar unit for his car, which is what we're going to install today and also do a teardown of the failed racing diffs conversion set. We'll also give you a quick rundown on what the failed set actually looks like from the outside. Because one wheel can be turned while the other is on the ground. As you can see, there is a tiny bit of force being transmitted, but yeah, nothing major. There is a slight bit of resistance more than I had in mind, but still, it's not enough to give any locking and that is why we are going to check the condition of the conversion set. So we need to take out the differential and my brother will do most of the work because it's his car. The two main 18 mils. I'll also remove the bolts from the two front pushings right now. <laughs> These extendable ratchets, game changer. This one is the one I usually use. It's as long as half of my arm and usually I can knock off any bolt with it without issues. For this nut, however, I had to use the big boy. It is longer than my whole leg. It's a one inch drive. Yeah, this thing was a real nice investment. Also, if you're wondering why I'm working in my winter clothes again, I have two pairs of trousers, two pairs of jackets and a thick shirt and I'm still cold. It is three degrees C in my garage. For my American friends, that's 37 Fahrenheit. Yeah, it's properly cold in here and I do have to make sure I don't get sick. Ah, the scheiß schwer. Those things are heavy. Let's quickly zap off the cover and remove the oil. Holy crap, there is a lot of metal in there. As you can see, the oil is very glittery. All the shiny particles, that's like metal, but these are some real metal chunks. Yeah, that's more what I'm worried about. Considering that this is the oil we already changed, that oil has like 200 kilometers, and for 200 kilometers of normal use, that's quite bad. At least the flanges are not welded on. This is the left side flange. And as you can see, there is a slight bit of discoloration because of heat. However, there is no actual damage to the flange itself. So I do not think that machining the flanges has any effect on the locking capabilities of the diff. So yeah, I think this is example enough that machining the flanges is not actually necessary for the function of the diff and if you think about how everything works having this in contact with the clutch actually just gives it extra friction surface now we can unbox this thing new seals good i was fearing that they were missing because we need those Unfortunately though, I will have to reuse the bearings because those haven't arrived yet, but I want to install this thing now because we need to work on my E46. And now you can actually see the true extent of metal being slung around. Like at the bottom, there's even more than at the front right here. Yeah, that is all metal and it's quite impressive. If we now take magnets and we now go fishing in the remains of the oil. 
there are some pieces that have quite the remarkable size. Like, seriously, 3-4 millimeters, some even 5. Pretty crazy. Around 5 cans of brake cleaner, the inside of the casing is clean again. We can't say that for the around uh, 20 grams of metal hanging around. And now we'll try to remove the bearings. Therefore, I bought this style of bearing remover. Let's hope that everything goes well. The entire outer race of the bearing was able to move the entire way, so we didn't damage anything. And yeah, this puller works incredibly well. I'm very surprised. You could just see me install the bearings and that was quite easy. I just used a small hammer and the correct style cup because this only touches the inner race where the resistance is and at the bottom the puck I had under it also only touches the inner race so the rollers get no resistance at all. This thing is seriously cold. I had my freezer set to minus 25 degrees celsius and I heated the bearings up with a hairdryer. There was like 40-50 degrees C of difference. That means that the press fit can be done easily with a small hammer and as long as you do not touch the outer race with the rollers or the guard, you should be fine. Also, that thing is unbelievably cold. Like, when I touched it, it hurt my fingers. Like, I'm not exaggerating. But yeah, I think it's fairly visible that that thing is seriously cold. The gear ring does not want to go on. Yeah, uh, it's too cold, so I need to heat that up as well. While waiting on the ring to heat up, we can disassemble this thing even further and check the state of the conversion set. Holy crap, this is not staged and it's a good thing we're disassembling this because this bolt was loose despite me using a lot of thread locker and I think if I hadn't done the dimpling around to compress it, it would have let loose at some point. I don't know if this is due to poor installation, but I really tried to go with their updated instructions that are in no one of their manuals, but yeah. Uh, somehow that wasn't enough. Weird, I could have sworn that this was the only thing that wouldn't let go. Definitely a good thing we're doing this. I have no idea how something could break like this. I am very surprised that this is that bad. Very fortunate that we're disassembling this diff because this would have grenaded definitely sometime soon. Absolutely mental. Now I'll just hammer this block out and look at the clutch packs. The block is still fine. The clutches do have wear on them. The side that was to the block is a little bit better from a wear perspective than the other side, which is normal, I guess. I am quite disappointed in general. But yeah, um, I don't really know what to say. That thing, however, I am 99% certain that was not my fault. I am just incredibly grateful that we decided to remove the unit before it grenaded the diff. Because, like I already said, this would have caused catastrophic failure in the near future. What we just found out is the unit does not fit into the casing because there's like one millimeter of space that's missing and I just don't manage to get it in because with this part right here, I'm hitting this part of the casing. Just like Quave commented on my last video, Blackline does seem to be a cheap shit copy of their product. But we'll make it work, we'll just grind a bit of the casing off, that shouldn't hurt rigidity and give us enough space to get it in. Around 20 minutes of modifying the housing later, we've got that thing to fit. We didn't compromise wall thickness too much. All of that with a wooden drill bit. Nice. Usually now would be the point where you measure backlash on the unit. But I don't have the gear to do that, so we're gonna improvise. And by improvise, I mean 
the backlash feels about the same as before, so it should be good. I just oiled up the seal. Now I lightly tap it into place. Not like that. I'm just cleaning the sealing area. And now we give it an adequate bead all around. And now I just distribute it with my finger. This way it's nice and thin and we don't have a lot of silicone going towards the inside. I'll just pop the cover on there. After finishing all the work, we tested the unit and when there is no load, well, the unit behaves like an open diff. When my brother turns one wheel slowly and I turn one wheel fast with force, his wheel accelerates as well. This effect can be felt a lot more when driving when there's real forces involved. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. These videos actually do take quite a bit of money and time to make, so a little support is actually greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching and see you soon.